I'll make the first statement and you make one. <laughs> um, yeah, obviously, uh, incredible win and uh, crowd, incredible, like incredible, incredible atmosphere in here. Uh, so uplifting. And, um, you know, for me, it's uh, you know, just a, a huge win for the program. And, uh, you know, what, what a team, you know, what, what an emerging team, a uh, formidable team that, uh, you know, is. Uh, you know, it was as good as anyone in this league. And, and um, you know, I think uh, today for me was why I've always in my career been smart enough to hire and, and have like the best staff in the country. Um, this guy's one of the best, uh, he's one of the best uh, assistant, co well, associate head coaches in the country. And, uh, and, and the rest of the staff, Luke and Tom, and um, you know, just did an unbelievable job here. But Smartest thing I've always done my whole career is recruit uh, incredibly talented young men with unbelievable character that gutted that came out and then hire the absolute best people that I can, the best coaches in the country to work with me. And this guy next to me, I can't say enough about how, how, how unbelievable this guy is at his job. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. <clears throat> Ask either one of us, just please. For both of you, if you, if you don't mind, um, start with Kamani being in the bowl. Can you describe what the arena sounded like and felt like and what that meant to you? And, and Dan, if you could share, if you could hear and, true, and really feel what was going on in the arena from wherever you were watching. Yeah, I guess I'll start. I was out there a little longer than you. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think I experienced it. Right, a little bit better than he did, but no, it was a, it was an incredible atmosphere. I mean, this is why we all came to UConn, including myself, every kid that we recruited, every staff members, obviously coach. Reason why he came back to this place. This is an unbelievable place when when we can get it rocking like like it was tonight. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of discourse about obviously where we play and uh, you know and the advantages at both places. Uh, when this place is packed like that, I mean, this. You know, we end up getting the best of both worlds when the place is like that. Uh, for me, back there, uh, it was surreal. Um, it played out much better than the Tulsa game. Uh, you know, maybe that experience. Uh, for me, um, I could, there was a delay. So I was a lot of, like, I was closing my ear. I, I was trying to close my ears because I would then, as the shot would go up, the crowd would react. So I spent most of the time just closing my ears while I was out there. The place was unbelievable, uh, like a gladiator, like the Coliseum, but it all felt like gladiators. Kamani, that's not a scenario I imagine you ever could prepare for, right, or, or, or plan for. So you're in that situation, you know, uh, Dan is, is off the court. How do you keep your composure, get your team to keep their composure? in a moment when it could easily have gotten you know, out of control? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I just felt like in our program, coach gives us all so much responsibility that I felt prepared for that. I really did. I didn't, there wasn't a, a point that I felt, you know, out of place at all. You know, literally with, with everything we do on a day-to-day -day basis, 11 months a year, you know, every one of us on our staff could have stepped up in that situation. And, um, you know, I felt ready. Our, our players were ready. Um, you know, we had great preparation leading up to that game. We knew what was at stake, and, and you know, we performed. But what did you tell them? I mean, listen, we just stuck to our game plan. I mean, things that we went over the last couple of days, I told them to just keep, keep believing in themselves, keep battling. Um, you know, that was really it. I mean, it, there wasn't, you know, there they were in-game decisions that had to be made, but... Um, you know, I think everybody in, in, in our program knew it was at stake today and we were ready for it. Tyler hits the three and then you get the turnover and the timeout. Um, was that what you were looking for, RJ kind of taking it strong to the hole or what were you sort of looking for there in that game winning play? Yeah, play? that's, that's a, I mean, that, that's one of our staples, um, getting the ball in RJ's hand and, and, and letting him create, have him in Adama and a Dama. You know, in a pick and roll situation, and you know he made a great decision. He made a strong move, and made an incredible play. You know, to give us the lead there. Uh, before RJ's basketball, what were the what were the huddles? What was the huddle like? 
the, the guys look pretty calm. I mean, what was it like, you know, talking to the guys? I mean, we were confident. I mean, we weren't happy to be down four, but we, you know, we still knew there was time on the clock and we, we, we work on late game execution every single day. So, I mean, the confidence comes from that type of preparation and you just saw it tonight. It seems like ancient history now, Dan, but what was going through your mind in the moment when, when you're walking off the court? I know obviously it's frustrating, it's difficult. How do you kind of do that? I mean, you know, it's happened to me before. Is this on? It's, ha it's happened to me before, so I knew how to handle it. <laughs> I know how to walk out. Uh, unfortunately for me, I, I just, I, I was obviously, I was in shock, um, you know, just because with the two situations, you know, occasionally when, when guys miss, uh, you know, shots at the rim, I think Tyrese had missed a, a finish in the paint. I turned and kind of hit the scorer's table. Then it was about a five or a six second delay. And then I got a technical foul, I guess, for hitting the scorer's table, you know, and then I felt like Gillespie was getting close to, you know, shooting free throws, technical free throws. I then turned to get the crowd loud while he shoot the technical and they threw me out. So, I mean, I would, obviously I, it was surreal. I was stunned um, by it, but I guess I'll, I'll wait and see what uh, the Big East, um, I'm, 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 I'm very eager to find out uh, from the head of officials what the explanation was on that. Money, uh, obviously RJ made a big offensive play at the end, but. Can you talk about the, the defense that, that, that sealed the game and you know taking the charge at the end, getting the turnover in between there and, and what his defense means for this team? I mean, listen, RJ has been, <clears throat> you know, as important player as we've had here in a long time on both ends of the floor. Um, you know, and, and just making that that that's a winning play. You know, that game, that game wins the, you know, that play wins the game for you. It's something he's done all year. Um, there was no surprise there. Um, but just showed his his toughness, his grit, and his will. For both of you, I guess. But Dan, you talked about how Adama kind of learned more after that first game against Eric Dixon, and he played like a man kind of possessed today. Uh, what did you see from him and, and just what he was able to accomplish? Tell you guys. Yeah, he wasn't letting that happen to him again. I mean, he, uh, you know, he won that matchup convincingly today. Uh, He's a very prideful man and uh, very determined man. And I think going into the going into this game, I think we knew that we'd be in great shape in that matchup. And then, you know, I think just the game plan going in was to make Samuels and Slater have to win the game for them offensively, and to limit the shot attempts of Dixon, uh, Gillespie, and Moore. Um, and for those guys, you know, they, they took 19 shots between them. Uh, obviously, they made some, uh, but we were able to limit Dixon and a lot and keep more under his average. Dan, you were talking in, you know, about making the next step and winning this game. What does that look like now? Yeah, uh, you know, the next step, obviously, um, you know, huge win. And, and I'm not sure what this does to the regular season championship. Uh, obviously, there's, uh, you know, that there's, it's going to be a little unbalanced in terms of, you know, not everyone's going to play the same amount of games. And uh, so, you know, I, I don't know if realistically, mathematically, we have any shot now at the regular season championship. But, um, you know, the, the, the program is obviously at a different point. You know, last year, the end of year two, we, we were playing as good as anyone in the American. You know, last year we, we took another step and became, you know, NCAA caliber semifinals of the Big East uh, tournament seven seed in the NCAA, we're obviously playing for much bigger things with this team. And I think this is, uh, this, this is gonna do a lot for this team's confidence moving forward. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we're, we're looking to, uh, to have a big next month or so. This can be for both of you, but it's been a long time since we saw the court stormed here. Um, what was that moment like when that buzzer went off and you saw that go down? <laughs> I didn't see it. I, well, I, was, I was hugging Benedict to my wife. <laughs> I mean, it, listen, that's what college sports is about. You know, and I think for all those guys to have that kind of memory, right, the place that they, they played at is going to be something that they that they remember forever. It was an awesome experience, awesome atmosphere out there. And listen, I know we're UConn, but we deserve to storm the court tonight. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I said to the guys before the game was, like, we're, 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 we're the favorite to win this game. Like, don't please don't come in with an underdog mentality. I know we, we knew what Villanova's been. Um, 
but we also know the steps that we've taken in, in year four here. And uh, so we just, you know, our guys shouldn't have come into this game with an under underdog mentality. And it's kind of weird to see UConn storm into court, but it's been, fans deserve it. Yeah. You know, our fans deserve that. Dan, when your guys made the critical plays in the closing seconds, the place erupted and like beer suds went up in the air, bottles were flying. I think you just described a little bit of this, but who were you watching with, your wife and, and David? and? What was the scene like in there at those moments and then when you saw your players for the first time? Yeah, my wife, she, I, I, uh, she got bounced early because uh, they went on a run. So she got <laughs> sent back to her seat. Um, but Dave was a great partner to watch the game with. I mean, he, he really kept, kept calm. He was very positive, Dave Benedict in there. Uh, I guess if I had to get thrown out, I'd want to get thrown out with, uh, and, and watch the game with Dave. I, I don't want to be in that situation again. As a sidebar too, like maybe last night, I shouldn't have spoke to Nate Oates. You know, like I talked to Nate last night, Kamani, and he talked about getting ejected in the Mississippi State game when they were down seven and they went on like a 20 to five run. It might've just set something in motion <laughs> that, that shouldn't have happened. I waited for everybody. I mean, I was dying to get out there on the court. I mean, I asked Dave, Multiple times, can I go out, slap the husky head? Can I get out there, please? And Dave demanded that I not go out there. Uh, I just waited in the tunnel, and I just wanted to hug the guys because uh, yeah, we love these guys. I mean, we're tough on them. We're demanding. We're 11 months a year. But, like, you built such a close bond together with these guys. I mean, they deserve that moment. I mean, you know, the, these players and, the, and the, the staff I have, they're so unbelievable. They, they deserve that. And I just wanted to hug them. I think Kamani hit his head. Because the, the, one of the other things that the XL Center has got to do in the renovation, whenever it happens, is they got to raise like that, 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 that walkway coming into the locker room. Because Adama did like a chest bump with Kamani. Kamani hit his head on the ceiling. He's got a big ass knot. <laughs> Last one. Well, if you have pulled better wireless too, it would help. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then, uh, you know, the, probably the, if there was a rock bottom before you got here, it was when Villanova came into this building and built a 70 to 31 lead and the crowd was howling. It was a mausoleum, you know, booing. Yeah. Uh, and then you look at tonight, they stormed the court. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, to, do you kind of see this as the culmination <clears throat> of everything that you came here to build? Yeah. That this is what you came to bring back. To yeah. You? I think it was like the first team meeting, come on, if you correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Like literally the first team meeting we had with the players was a possession in that game. Like they might have gotten, Villanova might have gotten five offensive rebounds in a possession. Um, you know, and it was, it, it was literally how we started our first team meeting uh, for the first individual workout and then the first practice before the season. This is who we're not going to be. Um, you know, uh, again, um, you hire a great staff, you recruit the type of players that we have here that are uh, high level talents and, and high character guys. And, you know, this is where we're at in year four. And, uh, you know, it's only going to get bigger and better from here.